Hello, hello, it's Eve, the Creative Curator. Welcome back to my channel. This is the second lesson in my Sewing Skills for Beginners course, which I have made available here on YouTube for free. Today, we are going to be covering sewing machine feet, such as this one. This is my um, invisible zipper fur. I've just dropped something. I don't know what I've dropped, but I dropped something. I think it was the screw, actually. Um, so in this lesson, I'll be covering all sorts of sewing feet so that you can understand the different sewing machine feet. They're also called presser feet, options available to you. I also have an article on my website. If you want to read through that instead, I will link it in the description and pin it to the first comment. Sewing machine feet can make or break a project. Like if you use the wrong sewing machine foot, then you probably break your machine as well. And so I'm covering all the different machine feet in this lesson. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah, yesterday we covered the sewing machine in general, looking around it, the anatomy of a sewing machine, the different sewing machine parts. If you didn't see that, then do pop back to that lesson. And tomorrow we will be covering threading your sewing machine, uh, which includes filling and loading a bobbin. So this is really beginner friendly. If you've never picked up a sewing machine before, this is where you want to start. So I will see you. Oh, I'm going to roll with the course material now, the lesson, and I will see you tomorrow for the next one. Bye. <laughs>
I sometimes will align my raw edge of my fabric with the outer edge and if I'm sewing a edge stitch or retain what's called as a retain stitch um, in the fashion industry not so much in the home sewing um, I would use the inner edge because you can see the difference between the line I'm trying I don't know if I get it any closer with it or focus so the line to the edge like the inner edge of this section of the foot is like three and a bit mils millimeters and so it's really handy to use your presser foot as a guide when you're sewing seam lines that's my top trick that's what i do all the time so those are the basic sewing machine feet that you will get as standard with your sewing machine so i've already mentioned the binder foot this is with my singer my hand crank singer it has so the way that it works obviously this is my bias tape and the binder foot <laughs> um they come with specific Mm, sized tapes that should be used with them. So when I was at university, uh, fashion school, we had two machines that were just dedicated to binding. One would have a foot this wide and another would have a smaller version and therefore sewing the different widths of bind bias tape. So this is two, three, three centimeters roughly wide bias tape if I open it up. So if we take it from the white line, it's one, two, three, almost four centimeters. The idea being that you have one piece of fabric here one piece of fabric here and when you're stitching whoop, like this because it attaches to my sewing machine foot um the foot stand here when you're sewing it along it would stitch both sections to the piece of fabric in one go rather than oh, i still can't get it in it's being so tricky here we go we're almost there <laughs> um i think this is evidence of how tricky this thing is and you'll need a pin or something encourage it along i remember one of the sewing technicians at fashion school i think it was sue or mandy well it would have been one or the other trying to show me how to do this and I, we were just sat there in giggles for like ever ah oh, it's just not going to go um this binding is probably a little bit on the big side as well so basically it would feed it through and as it's going through you have your needle in this hole here which is just on the inside edge of the bias tape and um, sewing it down. Um, so these are really handy if you're going to be doing a lot of binding of edges, um, whether of clothing or if you're into quilting, you're probably going to sew a lot of bias tape, in which case one of these is probably handy. I haven't used it since I got it. They're a pain in the bum. <laughs> but, you know, you might be less fiddly find it less fiddly than i do oh that was stressful <laughs> so moving on we then have a blind hem foot that is this one on my banana and the way that it works is you have a an, an edge can you see it has an edge there and you align your fabric in such a way that the stitches when they go through they just catch on the one edge of the fabric creating a blind hem so it can't actually be seen if you think about when you're sewing a single or double fold hem you have a visible line of stitching a pin hem too um if you use a blind hem then it's done it it catches the fabric in such a way that it's invisible once pressed and turned really handy i've not used this because well i never use it blind hems um I think it's um, very easy to get these sewing presser feet that you don't need. Um, like I thought I would use this, which is why I bought this one, but I never, I used to use a lot of knit fabrics at university, which is when I would use it if I was blind hemming knit or fine fabrics, but then I never used it, so. Okay, next up we have a button foot. I don't own a button foot. A button foot is one that you can line up, put your bit in and stitch, bum, 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 bum flat buttons only, of course. I do have a buttonhole foot. Now, there are two elements to a buttonhole foot. This is a buttonhole foot for my banana, number three. You can see it's got ridges on the other side, okay? So this one is really, really handy. I Do I use this one? Yeah, I do sometimes. See, I have been known to just go and create a regular buttonhole using my number one. <laughs> which is my standard presser fit because my banana has a dial it's like one through six and I press I, I change it and it does the stitching and this is this one has always worked out fine but this is a dedicated bit and hole fit and the difference is you can see this one has ridges below it and this one doesn't so this one allows for when you're creating those buttonholes holes with the thick ridges of thread this allows them just 
move smoothly underneath it basically. You can also use a buttonhole foot like this if you're creating piping or pin tucks, anything that needs to have a bit of space to run along. This works really well. Um, the other aspect of a buttonhole foot is this one. And the way that it works is you click your, you put your sewing, because these are clip-ons, this one is. You would clip on your presser foot onto your sewing machine and then you're fixed. So if I know that I want mine to be, this is one centimeter, two centimeter, three centimeters. So my buttonhole can be a maximum of three centimeters. If I know I only want it to be 2.5 centimeters and I've clipped it on and it starts stitching, do 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 one, two, three. When that red line lines up with this red line, I know that my length is 2.5 centimeters, which is an inch, right? And then back again. And that's, so it's an easy way to maintain your buttonhole measurement <laughs> length, if you like. So also another handy tool. I have used that one before, actually. Another sewing machine foot for my Benina is the invisible sewing foot. So I actually only succeeded in getting this recently, over a year after the original lesson that you have been watching was recorded. It's really hard to get an invisible zipper foot for my Benina because it has these um, clutches. That's the word that I used to describe those. Because my sewing machine is an older version, pre-1998, I think it is. So more modern versions of the Benina, they don't have these two sticking out parts. They have a bar going across. So I then can't use the new versions on my old machine. I have to use these. It's a little bit harder to get hold of this, but I did track one down. And you can see it has two channels. And that is where the invisible zipper, so the coil section of the zipper, goes between these holes like those gaps and then you're able to sew it down really close and get a true invisible or concealed zipper these are invaluable i used to use these all the time on my industrial machine um but i haven't had one for my benina because i wasn't able to get one so i'm really looking forward to getting back to this and i will create a dedicated tutorial using this so that you have that as well for this online sewing course so the last fit to show you for my benina is the zipper fit and this, if you compare it to the first, the standard presser fit, you can see on this one, there's a, a hole in the middle that's from the center outwards either side, allowing my needle to zigzag stitch, okay? With the zipper fit, there is no such space in the center. It's actually barred off, if you like. You can see the center has got like a block of metal. On here, you can see that the width of the presser fit attachment, so where it clips on, is maybe like half a centimeter. Um, and it's bang in the middle, as is the case with all the others. On this one, you can see that actually it's one side or the other. So if I put my presser foot and clip it here, then I can have my zipper here to the right, and the needle will fit just within this little wedge. And if I turn it over, you can see that there's um, space here then, because it's raised or lowered, depending on which way you're looking at it, the teeth of the zipper will fit nicely along that edge. Let me grab a zipper that I have here earlier. So if I was sewing along and I want it to sew along this edge here, I would clip, boom, 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 boom. And you can see that that zipper runs nicely underneath because I have that, it's been lowered or raised, depending on how you look at it. So it's not going to get caught. Okay, um, I use this quite a lot. I mean, I we, I think we're becoming very clear that I'm a bit of a rebel and I don't always follow the rules. I will knock up a zipper using this if it works and I'm too lazy to switch my feet. But this is a really, 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 really handy fit to have. And it is just a standard zipper fit. Invisible zippers are also called concealed zippers. This is an invisible zipper, the blue one. This one is not. Um, it's a nylon invisible zipper and I can install it using a standard zipper fit. So I've never missed having an invisible zipper fit, but if you felt like it would be handy for you, that would be a good one to get. I have two more that are my, two more presser feet that are for my finger. This one, I don't actually know what it's supposed to. It might be the darning slash freehand one because it has just the one hole in the middle. I've never used it, but we've already established I don't really use this machine much for other anything other than sewing leather um, remnants. So I'm not sure what it does. I can try and find out um, and share that information with you. Last one I'm going to talk to you is about foot hemmer. Now you can easily um, use a foot hemmer for 
hemming, <laughs> very, very fine hems, you the fabric would literally be popped in here, curled under and stitched in place. Um, I just make pinned, pinned hems myself. Um, I find pin hems super relaxing to make, but if you don't want to go through the faff of sewing multiple stitch lines for a pin hem, then this would be a great fit for you. You only really need them for fine fabrics like silks, chiffons, that kind of thing, because obviously you're not going to get a bulky fabric through there. Um, and also a fine fabric like a silk chiffon, which you would use on scarves and things. You do want that kind of like rolled hem effect to kind of like wrap the raw edge on the inside and stitch it down. So if you think you're going to be sewing lots of silk, then this would be a valuable presser fit for you to get. Otherwise, you don't really need it. So this is another inserted section because I have actually purchased more sewing machine feet for my Benina since the video was originally recorded for my Sewing Skills for Beginners course. So I have already shown you the invisible zipper fur, so I'll set that to one side. The other feet I have, so this one is a special overlock foot. And you can see, I think this one was supposed to have come with my banana because it's a number two. And I feel like it was supposed to have come with it. And it's got a very fine, I don't know how to describe it. I haven't used it yet, but it's for doing like an overlock stitch. So an overcast stitch on a... I believe it's for knit fabric, but I haven't tried it out. Ooh. So I do need to test this one up and maybe I'll do a little um, Instagram tutorial just so that that one's done. This one is a patchwork foot. So it's the number 37 and you can see it's got markings on it and it's to help you. So when you're sewing along, if you want to stop um, a specific distance, sorry, away, like you would stop, I think this is like, half an inch i don't think it was metric i think it was imperial so you would then stop at a certain point knowing that okay if you pivot here if this is the raw edge of your fabric and you pivot that the seam the edge is here of the fabric and the edge is here and so you're going to have consistent sewing all the way around if you're like at taping binding or something or if you're sewing lines the problem i found is although it is made for my machine and it's a clip-on uh the needle actually caught on it in several occasions and I feared damage to my machine. So yeah, that's those ones. And then finally, this is only one of the sewing machine feet that I wanted to invest in recently. This is the number 52. It is a plastic foot. It's not Teflon, it's plastic, but it works the same way it's for working with leather. So it's wide enough. It has um, a big enough gap for the swing of the needle. So the swing, I don't think I've mentioned it in the lesson, but the swing is how far from side to side the needle can go and that's one of the reasons why these clidges exist is to make sure that you don't put the wrong foot on and have a smaller or greater swing enabled by the foot that your machine doesn't allow for so this is my intended foot for finishing off the patchwork leather cycle skirt that i'm working on which i will reveal when it's finished and yeah it's not quite the one that i wanted i wanted another one as well but this one was like 50 pounds or 50 euros just for this sewing machine foot the other one i wanted was over 100 euros so you can see that it's quite an, a bit of an investment buying specialist feet for your sewing machine which is why it's a good idea to see what you can do with the ones that come with your sewing machine before moving on to actually investing in more so that's a selection of um different presser feet there are others out there like a walking foot a roller foot so if you're working with leather fabrics i have a teflon foot and i cannot find it um, it's my old industrial Teflon foot and I know I've got it here with a whole bunch of bobbins and things and I haven't been able to find it. If I do, I'll take a photo or add a smaller clip on how it works. But basically, if you're working with non-grain fabrics, so leather, suede, plasticky, vinyls, that kind of thing, you're going to want a non-stick foot. Um, the reason for that is because the way that the feed dog on the sewing machine works to gently encourage the fabric through, and these are all quite smooth, so they will glide over the fabric quite nicely unless it's plastic or leather and those kind of like sticky fabrics in which case these will stick this metal will stick um and it will drag at different rates with the feed jog and you end up with kind of like a mishmash of um stuff happening when you're sewing so a non-stick fit will really help with that quite often on the home sewing machines you'll find them plastic and on industrial machines they're quite often teflon the effect is the same um they will stop the the material the foot from sticking to the material 
You can also get Teflon um, feed dogs as well. So instead of having the jaggedy ones, you can replace them with Teflon ones on industrial machines, which I also did when I was at fashion school because I was sewing a lot of leather and it prevents damage. If you didn't want to use a plastic foot, you could use a roller foot, which has these little cylinders and they roll along, which works really well as well. A walking foot, I love walking foot machines. It's basically made up of two sections. So if we look at this one, you can see it has two feet, two sections either side, but imagine those separated and one will come down as the other comes up and the other comes down. It's really good for like non-grain fabrics, like leathers and suede and sticky and bulky stuff. If you're doing like denim and it's quite, quite bulky, that would be really helpful. And I think that's it. There are other feet out there like for embroidery and for like darning and piping and pin ticking, but you don't necessarily, as some getting used to sewing, um, and really getting to grips with your machine. You don't necessarily want a whole bunch of sewing machine feet that are gonna confuse you. I mean, you can see, like, in terms of my Singer sewing machine, I use this one consistently, and I would possibly put that one into practice. These are just unnecessary, in my opinion. For my Benina, this one is used consistently. This one, sporadically. This is all the time sporadic, rarely. And I, yeah, never. <laughs> I, I will start using them more, okay, um, since they're there. Like you don't need all the different presser feet for your sewing machine, you just need what works for you and your needs. So the first thing I would recommend you do is to sit and think about the types of sewing you're likely to sew. If you're here, it's probably because you wanna sew your own clothes, because that's primarily what I'm known for teaching. Um, and so think about what kind of things you're going to want to sew. Are you going to want to sew knit fabrics? Well, these will all work fine. Do you want to sew woven fabrics? Again, these feet, your standard feet will work fine. If you want to work with um, other non-grain materials like leather, suede, plastics, vinyl, PVC, all that kind of stuff, then you're going to want to add in other sewing machine feet. And then think about finishing techniques do you think you're just going to sew simple hems in which case these are fine um if you think that you might want to do bound edges on everything then of course you will probably want to get a binding foot um good luck with that <laughs> um if you know that you're never going to want to sew a buttonhole in your life and you'd rather take it to some a dry cleaner to do them um i know that if you go to dry cleaners they quite often will do alterations and put buttons on for you then you'll never need a button foot so you can get rid of those and if you know that zippers are like you know something that you never want to experience you don't need a zipper foot so sit there and think about i mean why would you not want a zipper there's some amazing zippers look at this one it's beautiful this is a riri zipper it's an italian brand and it's so beautiful it makes such a great exposed zipper on a skirt or a pair of biker trousers or something or a jacket um really nice so have a think about the type of sewing you're likely to want to do with your sewing machine and then start thinking from there a list of um, sewing machine feet that you think might be suitable. And if you've got no idea, of course, you can just email me um, and ask me for my thoughts. Um, hello at thecreativecurator.com. So that's all for sewing machine feet. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye.